The Legion Go may not be the first handheld console to be released, but it is the first one that I've touched and tried and the first one that I got to review. So let me get this right off the bat. This is not a gaming review. There's so much of that everywhere, so I decided to do something else. I decided to explore the Legion Go beyond gaming in an area that's kind of important to me, content creation. But you may be asking, why the Legion Go? Well, there are a couple of reasons, but I guess it's mainly two things. That big screen and those controllers. Why? Well, you're about to find out right now. Let's first start, as always, by getting to know the device. The Lenovo Legion Go is powered by an AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor partnered with 16GB of RAM and up to 1TB of internal storage. It features an 8.8-inch touch display that supports 144Hz refresh rate. Now, the most identifiable feature of the Lenovo Legion Go, apart from its large display, is its detachable controllers. These can be set up in different ways depending on what you're doing or playing. Running a full version of Windows 11, the Legion Go also allows you to install and run traditional PC apps. It also has Legion Space, a new hub that houses your games, settings, and more. And in case you're wondering, you do have the option to upgrade your SSD and RAM. And there's also a micro SD card slot for additional storage expansion. Now, one of the things that I absolutely love about the Legion Go, especially when you pit it against its competitors, is really the flexibility that it offers. With its large kickstand and detachable controllers, you can really personalize your setup in more ways than one. I know that the Legion Go is primarily a gaming device, of course I know that. But I am the kind of user who likes to get as much as I can out of my devices, and that was something I could easily do with the Legion Go. <laughs> my usual work setup utilizes the device's FPS mode with some modifications. I still use the right controller as a vertical mouse, it does that very well, but I instead pair it with a keyboard instead of using the left controller. In a pinch, you can use just the controllers, but you'll first have to map its buttons to your most used functions. Given its powerful internals, I expected the Legion Go to handle 4K footage and raw photo editing with ease, and that it did. Editing a short 60-second video using 4K 10-bit footage was smooth and hiccup-free. I could scrub through footage quite smoothly and lighter effects rendered quickly enough. Color grading flat footage, which is pretty resource-heavy sometimes, wasn't hard to do either. A little choppy but still very much bearable. Apart from being powerful enough for minor video edits, the Legion Go's larger display also makes it perfect for media work. Now you may be asking or you may be wondering, isn't it too small to work on? Well, you can game on it, can you? And it is one of the larger displays out there when compared to its competitors. And personally, as someone who wants that amount of power in that compact body and the fact that it can play games too, I will find a way to make it work and I think I was able to. There is some compromise, definitely. Some windows will have to stay closed or you'll have to rearrange your workspace more efficiently. But once you do find that ideal setup for you, it can be pretty comfortable. The high quality images from its high resolution and color accurate display mean I don't have to second guess when color grading either. And it is large enough that I can zoom in to fix tiny details. It has its limitations, of course. I was able to animate 2D graphics pretty well, pretty smoothly, but when you do start piling on those layers or when you start working on 3D or more so textured 3D, you will start to see the struggle. Even if I pushed the device to its max settings, to its max capabilities, it's just not built for that, I would think. Alternatively, you can attach an external GPU, but of course this setup makes it much less portable. For simpler productivity tasks, the Legion Go knocks it out of the park. Whether it's scheduling social media posts, answering emails, or even managing our website, I could do it all quite comfortably and without compromise on the Lenovo Legion Go. But while all in all it is powerful, it's still hard for me to recommend as a laptop replacement because it really isn't. The Legion Go in the realm of video editing, photo editing, or maybe just content creation in general, does serve a very niche audience, and interestingly, I think I'm part of it. Undeniably, the Legion Go is made for gamers, and gamers can appreciate it inside and out. But for someone like me who likes to balance work and play more evenly, I guess, the Legion Go becomes a very interesting device because it's powerful enough, 
to do those two tasks quite efficiently. And it's in a compact body too. The Lenovo Legion Go has many things that I love about it, but as a first-gen device, there's always room for improvement. My major concern is its battery life. It's rather sad at just under two hours. That's when you're gaming or editing. I kid you not, the moment I got the low battery warning on the Legion Go, it took about a minute or two. I would even say a minute before it shut down and all this while I was still scrambling to look for the charger. Maybe a little bit my fault, but hey, it shouldn't take that fast. Any handheld gaming device, and I'm talking about anything handheld, should have a respectable amount of battery, in my opinion. Because most of the time, if not all the time, you will be using it out of the house. Unfortunately, with the Legion Go, you will have to carry some sort of battery pack or extra source of power, or basically bring the charger wherever you go. Second, while it is a portable device, it's still bulky and heavy. I do get tired holding onto it for long, and I've found the best way to pack it is to separate separate the controllers from the body so it takes up less room. I feel like if it was just a little bit thinner, just a little bit, because I don't even mind the size anymore, you can detach those controllers to make it more compact, but that thickness is of concern to me. And if it was just a little bit slimmer, I think it will be more ergonomic. Maybe that's something we'll see with the Legion Go 2, if there ever is one. Finally, I'd like to see an improvement in the overall user experience. There are still some kinks that need to be worked out and Legion Space was really something that I never got to use effectively. And you kind of still need some PC know-how to troubleshoot the device when problems arise. The Lenovo Legion Go is a really great and versatile device for someone like me because I can use it effectively beyond just gaming. Its powerful internals are fit for all the media work I do and its portability means I can have a powerful device in a pretty compact body. And the fact that it can run heavy games pretty well is a very big plus for this casual gamer. And that's about it. As a casual content creator, as a casual gamer and full-time content creator myself, I did find a place for the Legion Go in my life. It kind of filled an in-between need for me. Let me quickly explain that because the Legion Go is almost as powerful as a laptop, basically as powerful as a laptop, but it does retain the form factor of a tablet, say a, tab a very thick tablet. And that's something that I can use, especially when I'm out of the house. And come on, the fact that you can just switch from gaming to editing all while handheld or all while on the go, it's just so much fun for me. Incoming are the usual spiels. If you haven't yet, please do consider subscribing to us here at The Modern Creatures. I think we do pretty good stuff. But if not, let us know. Maybe we'll make those kinds of videos happen, whatever you guys want to see. And we're also on socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Everything you need to know is in that description box. And I guess that's it for me for this video. It's your modern creature, Vika, and I'll see you next time.